Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel. And uh, to answer a question, some of you have seen uh, my video the other day, and we're wondering about the positioning of the MLA-30 loop. So for a loop, um, and this has to do with magnetic loops and loops in general, uh, positioning of an outdoor loop. How you know? Do you how do you do you have to rotate it? Do you have to um, you know position it in a specific direction? So my MLE thirty is my on my front balcony, and it isn't very far from the house. Actually, if you look on the edge of your screen here, where my mouse pointer is, this is my where I live. This is the house. So you could see that it's not that far away from it. It probably is about. Uh, three feet from the wall. So the first question that some of you have asked is, well, you know, does it have an interaction with the house because it's so close? Definitely the rule to have an outdoor loop is to position it as far away from your home as possible. That is absolutely a rule. Now, I live on the third floor, positioning it away from the um, house is kind of difficult. So this is my best positioning. Now, how did I choose this place? Did I do anything special? Did I try anything to know that, well, this is probably the best place for it? Yeah, what I did is I actually made temporary installs at different locations, both in my backyard with what I could do and in the front uh, balcony with what I can do. And I simply looked at my receiver and um, just looked at the amount of noise on several frequencies, noted down how high the noise was, and then reinstalled it but at a different place and looked at the noise again. So this gave me the um, fact that this position, even though still noisy, is better than any other place that I could have it in. Um, unless I really take it and, and put it somewhere else that is further away from my home. So that's the best that I could do, unless I would really extend the wire length a lot and at that point be able to install it, say, maybe on the fence of the yard, which would be now 10 to 15 feet away from the house and maybe it could be better there. But that starts to make it a little complicated for the install, the length of wire I need to do it. So I went for the easy part, but yeah, it could be interesting to try even though more complex ways. But you know, this channel, I always wanna kind of pride myself in saying it's let's do it as simple as possible because most people are uh, new and don't have really that much a space for antennas. The other thing is the positioning. Why is it in that angle? And what is this angle, you know, this position? Well, this position technically is uh, the loop itself is southwest to northeast. Is there a shortwave reason for it to be in there? No. Is there a other reason for it to be in that position? Yes. Noise. Rotating it slowly, looking at the S meter on my radio, this is the least amount of noise for me. And for most people that will have a magnetic loop like the MLA30, or if you're using a U loop, uh, you'll want to position it most of the time for shortwave in the lowest noise possible and just leave it like that. Of course, if you have the ability to rotate it, there's some signals that can actually benefit from rotation, especially on medium wave. But for the most part, just position it so that the noise is the lowest and just leave it like that. That will be the best compromise because what you want to have is lowest noise possible. And remember a loop, although directional, when you get a signal from the other side of the earth, the directional pattern isn't really there anymore with all the way that the signals mess up as they actually move towards us. It'll be more for local signals and for signals that, like on medium wave, that you know really, really are close to us. That's where the directional pattern is really intense. 
So that is um, that question. The other question is, can it work indoors? Could I, you know, I live in a condo. I can't put an outdoor antenna. I have no space for an outdoor antenna at all. I, you know, uh, you know what? A lot of people have, with success, installed it indoors uh, near a window and seem to have some pretty decent reception. And I know that there's quite a few of you that have the pleasure of having shortwave reception again, thanks to an MLA 30 in, you know, the window or in the patio door or whatever, uh, indoors and you're happy with it. So, uh, yes, it could, it could. And you know, this is not expensive. It's like $40 and, uh, for $40, you can't really, you know, go wrong that much. Um, it's, it's really is a surprising antenna. It's not a miracle antenna. I say that all the time. And there are other antennas that definitely beat it easily, including a long wire, if the noise is low where you live. Uh, this is really the antenna for the you know city dweller or the guy that just can't hear anything because the noise is too high where he lives. Uh, not a DX machine antenna for a guy that lives in the countryside with zero noise on his radio. You'll benefit much more from something else than this, definitely. Um, can it, uh, one of the questions that I hear all, of, all the time is, yeah, but you know, I'm afraid that if I leave it outdoors, it's going to break, you know, easily. Look, this one is now at three winters. And Canadian winters here in Montreal are kind of rough. Plus all the summer, the heat, the thunderstorms, the winds, it just is still working and I got no problem with it. So that's, you know, uh, that tells you that, you know what, it's pretty tough. And uh, the inside is pretty much sealed on the circuit. So, you know, I got no problem and I don't think I'll have any problems leaving it outdoors all the time. Do you have to ground the loop? Nope, you don't ground this. You leave it like that. And there's a false sense of security when people talk about grounding. Um, a lot of people think of grounding as of, I'm going to ground it because of lightning that might strike it. No, grounding or not, any antenna that has lightning striking directly on it, your grounding serves no purpose at all. Everything's going to blow up, including in your home. It, it, it serves no purpose to ground your antenna for lightning, direct hit lightning. It might serve a purpose on other types of antennas. This, a magnetic loop is kind of a self-sustained uh, electrical system. There's no grounding to, ha to have on it or anything. Um, would there be a danger in thunderstorms and lightning? The danger is always there for every antenna, okay? Grounded or not. Even if your antenna is grounded, if a lightning strike gets really close and you did not disconnect the antenna from your radio, your radio is going to blow up. It's not, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's grounded or not. There's this uh, false sense of grounding for protection of lightning. It's not for that that you ground. You ground certain types of antennas because it might improve their receive capability. And grounding your station can remove, for example, a ham station, remove spurious, you know, um, frequ radio frequencies when you transmit from, you know, being on the radio, they'll dissipate more on the grounding side, stuff like that. But um, stop thinking grounding is going to protect you. If there's a lightning strike close, that's why you want to disconnect the cable from the radio. By doing so, you're protecting your radio. And lightning strike doesn't have to strike. First of all, the chances of it striking your MLA 30 is close to zero. You have more chances probably of winning the lottery. Um, almost. It's really lightning strikes that could be very close to you. Um, you know, and what that's going to do mostly is that it'll induce enough current to blow the amp of the antenna. But, you know, nothing more. The antenna is going to just become useless. And you just have to buy a new one. Um, but that also is the reason why you want to disconnect the antenna from the radio. For the rest, uh, is there a reason to change anything on this antenna? Well, it works very well with the way it is. 
But you know, there's uh, lots of there's a few groups I've noticed of MLE30 modification. I know a lot of you guys have modified it. Some of you seem to say that you modified it in a way that it gives you better reception on some frequencies. Um, I could see. I saw something this week that I could definitely see. Having a bigger loop on this might definitely make this antenna better on medium wave. And you know, I'm I, I would not be surprised if the electrical balance for the frequency range doesn't change. If you have a loop that's twice the size of this one on the MLA30, I could see that maybe it would perform better because bigger loop means more signals getting in. Um, up to what point though? That's another story because the amplifier can definitely probably be overloaded by something that is too big. But you know, there's a lot of experimentation to be done and at the price they are, they are great for that also. So if you have any more questions on the MLA30 or any loops uh, that of similar you know types of loops like U loop and so on, um, you can ask below in the uh, description in the, uh, the the comments section. Sorry, and I'll try to answer. Or if I need to, I'll have a, a video of even more um, questions and answer on the MLA30 and loops in general. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.